Hi everyone, for the past couple of weeks, I've been imaging NGC 2903. I even streamed some of it on YouTube and hung out with some cool people. I'm going to be showing you how I took those 15 second exposures in LRGB and processed them in Serial and GIMP. Welcome to Deep Sky Detail. So the first step was loading all of my images into Cyrillic. Cyrillic is a great program that will create scripts for you and run them in Cyril. Here I have six nights of data for my ELF filter, and then one night of imaging RGB. I used a Celestron C8 on my Orion Sirius mount. See my last processing tutorial for a full setup and how to load images into Cyrillic. Okay. So I created and ran the scripts, which gave me four FITS files, one for L, R, G, and B. I then took my L data and opened it in Cyril. The first thing I did was perform an auto stretch to look at the data. It looks okay. Then I went to image processing, star processing, and star net star removal. I checked pre-stretch linear image and recompose on completion. Make sure you have Starnet++ downloaded and tell Cyril where the executable file is so it will run correctly. After that was done, I got two images. One starless and the other just the stars. I used a generalized hyperbolic stretch to bring out the galaxy's details using the sliders on the left. I'll go more in depth when explaining the RGB data. Then I stretched the stars. Once I got everything to how I liked it, I did a background extraction. Using the RBF interpolation method, I clicked on sample points around the image and clicked Compute Background. I then moved the smoothing slider down until the background no longer changed. After cropping the image, I saved the L file as a TIFF. After that, I needed to combine data from my RGB filters. I clicked Image Processing and RGB Compositing. Cyril then asked me to load the R, G, and B images. Once I did that, I just had to click Close, and it did it for me. Now I live in a pretty light polluted area, and my green channel always dominates my other filters in terms of initial brightness. The automatic color calibration doesn't always work so well with my data, so I initially did it manually. In Ciro, you can click Image Processing and Histogram Transformation. There, you can stretch the channels individually by unchecking the channels you don't want and setting the black point. Once all the colored histograms are lined up, I can continue processing. I then did a photometric color calibration. I set my target and then put in the focal length of my scope and pixel size of my camera. Cyril then calibrated the colors of the image automatically. After that, an arc sign transformation helped bring out the color of the stars a bit. Then I did a generalized hyperbolic stretch on this image. To do this, first select a small area of the sky without the galaxy in it and set your symmetry point. Then move the local stretch intensity slider up pretty far. After that, start moving the stretch factor slider until you start seeing the galaxy's details. Click apply and repeat if needed. Note that the local stretch intensity slider on the second time doesn't need to go as far up. For my RGB data, I didn't repeat it because it was too noisy, and all the detail will be in the luminous layer anyway. I then performed a background ex extraction on the RGB data, and that was it for Cyril. Now to move on to my own special sharpening tool. The tool I created only works on black and white data, 
but I only need it for my luminance filter data anyway, so it's all good. All you have to do is load the image, wait for it to complete, and then download the sharpened file. It really is that easy. I then brought the sharpened image and RGB image into GIMP. Because I cropped the sharpened image, I have to make sure the RGB and L channels are aligned. To do this, reduce the opacity of the RGB data so you can see both the RGB and L data at the same time. Press the M key for move it, move it, after you've reclicked the RGB data. Then use your arrow keys to align the RGB layer on top of the L layer. Toggle on and off the RGB layer to make sure everything is correct. I then cropped the image so I wouldn't see the stacking artifacts. I noticed that there were some dust spots that didn't quite calibrate out. My C8 must have some mirror flop in it. So I used heel selection from the resynthesizer plugin to get rid of them. I want the galaxy's core to pop a bit, so I duplicated the L layer, applied a high pass filter to it, and set that layer as soft light. I then added a layer mask with full transparency. After clicking on the layer mask, I used a white colored brush to reveal the highlights from the high pass filter. I then applied a Gaussian blur to the layer mask to blend everything together. Make sure you are blurring the mask and not the layer itself. After that, I set the RGB layer mode to LCH color and applied a mask to that as well to keep the RGB noise out of the background. See my last processing video for how to do that. I then created a new layer from all the visible layers and duplicated it. In Gimmick, I then used Ian's Noise Reduction 2019 on the duplicated layer in order to remove the noise. I was very aggressive here and moved the mid and large noise sliders all the way up. I also increased the noise reduction in the shadows. After applying, I have a very smooth background, but the galaxy has lost its detail. To fix that, I added a layer mask to this duplicated layer. I copied the layer mask I created for the RGB layer and used it again on this layer. However, this layer mask needs to be inverted. After inverting the layer mask by clicking colors, invert colors, I checked around the image to see what it looked like. There's still some fine detail noise, so I went to filters, enhance, and despeckle to get rid of it. Default settings should probably be fine, except I lowered the black level just in case. After applying, you can see how much better it looks. The background is still kind of uneven, so I brought up curves. I pressed control and clicked on a couple of places in the background that differed in brightness a bit, as well as on the galaxy to create an anchor point. I then moved the darkest part of the background up a little bit by clicking on that point and using the up arrow on my keyboard to fine tune things. It's starting to look pretty good, but there's one more thing we can do. Let's decompose the image into lab color space by clicking colors, components, and decompose. Find lab and click OK. Look how noisy the A and B channels are. Let's blur those out a bit. This will keep all of the detail in the L layer while getting rid of a lot of the noise in the color channels. Now click Colors, Components, and Recompose. When you go back to look at the original image, the color noise is gone. Next, I went around and applied a bit of blur to the outer spiral, spiral arms to get rid of some noise there. Finally, I flipped the image and rotated it 180 degrees because I liked it better that way. Let's take a look at the final image. It's not perfect, the stars are a bit weird, but it's pretty good for about 2015 second exposures. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.